So far we've done a lot of prep work for this in our sketching and in our collecting of reference. So now here's the fun part. You get to choose which approach you want to go with. So guys, do you want to choose for me? Do you think the horizontal is more interesting or the vertical could be more interesting? Hands for horizontal? All right. Even though I'm doing a horizontal in the other class too, that's fine. There you go. So I'm going to just save my sketch just as a JPEG so I can up, update it in Canvas. But now I have this, this open in Photo P. My next step is to crop down to the one, time, one I want to use. So we haven't used the crop tool before. It's underneath the magic wand. So it's the fifth tool down. No, one, two, three, four. Yep, fifth tool down. You just drag the box from the corners. Be careful not to hit return because that will crop things before you want them to and i'm just going to go outside of my sketch because my sketch isn't perfectly clean and i don't need it to be and then i'm going to hit return so that gets rid of all of that extraneous information because i sketch digitally i'm also going to flatten it all right just so it's all one layer just like if you brought your photo of your sketch in okay next I'm going to get off the crop tool, click on the move tool or something else, and I'm going to go to image, image size, because I need to make sure that this space is big enough for my references. And I need it to be at minimum 8 inches by 10 inches by 300 pixels per inch. So if I move this to inches, this is 18 by 12 inches, but it's only 72 pixels per inch. So I'm going to change that to 350, and I might make that height, because I'm working in Photo P, I might make that 11. And then it's going to automatically change the width because its aspect ratio is locked, right? As long as it's bigger than 8 by 10, so anything smaller than 8 is not acceptable. You will not like what print you get. So make sure your smallest dimension is at least 8. And I would say you could go up to 11, you could go up to 12. Don't go higher than 16. <laughs> and then your, your pixels per inch should be at least 300. So if you're trying to really keep memory low, because you're working on a, a computer that's not very good, uh, you would do it at these dimensions, 8. Mine would be 8 by 12. I can't go less than 8 by 300. That's the absolute minimum, and that's in the directions. So if you look at the assignment directions, it will tell you right here. The final resolution and size of your digital artwork should be no less than 300 pixels per inch at 8 by 10. But if you desire a print that's larger, you can make it larger. This suggests around 13 by 19, which is the middle size paper we can print. The way I, I do kind of both at the same time is that I'll do a little bit more than 8, like 11, and then I'll do a little bit more than 300, like 350. So if it turns out really well, I can print it larger than just 8 by 10. There it is. It's going to be blurry because we just forced it to be a lot more pixels, right? But this is just our, our blueprint. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my move tool and my rulers. And remember, you can turn on and off rulers with command R. And I'm going to drag them around my image. This is called framing your image because these guides will give you clear horizontals and verticals. You see how that one's really tilted? Okay, next, I want to grow space around it. So right now, I have an image a plan, but I don't have a lot of place to put cutouts. So if I'm doing this collage by hand, I've taped off my, my artboard to the middle of my desk. I need the rest of my desk. So we're going to grow your canvas size under image. And we've done this before, but we're going to grow the canvas size this time in inches to a new measurement, which is 40 inches by 30 inches. If you're doing landscape format like, like I am, it's going to be 40 inches wide, 30 inches tall. 
growing from the middle looks like that. If you're doing portrait format, it would be 30 inches wide, 40 inches tall. But this is like having a drafting table now with my blueprint in the middle. And now I'm going to start cutting out from magazines. And what do I do first? And placing them around it. What's number one? It's this guy. I'm going to bring in that magazine and then push it off to the side. But unlike traditional collage, I can do more than just rotate something or cut it out. I can also shrink it. So I'm going to shrink it a little bit because I know I want it to basically fit within that space. But first I just need to bring it in. So there it is. Hit return, it's placed, it's a smart object, which means even if I transform it more, it will always be full resolution. So if I view this, see how sharp that is? How nice, how clean, oh, thank you, Pixabay. Ooh, keep going. Ah, so those are the actual pixels. So we talk about high image quality here. That's print resolution, not just screen resolution. Okay, next, what was number two? The spaghetti. Bring it in. Put it on top of my background. You can layer all of these. My spaghetti's already about the right size, so I'll leave it as it is. What's next? My hamburger. There it is. It's already about the right size. They'll come in at their native resolution. If I want to rotate it a little bit, I can. Hit return. I've got my goulash, it's kind of my lake around the uh, turkey, or duck, it's duck. Look at that, you can already see how it's going to work. Beautiful. What's going to be tricky is making it convincing as a landscape, but I will accept that challenge. So it needs to fill up about that space, so there we go. Then what do I need? I need the sky. Just bring that in, whole thing. Hope it's big enough. It is, there it is, good. Move it off to the side. I can leave it off the corner. As long as I can see it, it won't lose its information unless I crop again. And actually, as long as it's a smart object, it will never lose its information because you can't get rid of pixels in a smart object. That's why you have to rasterize it before we can erase. Okay, and then I have my pizza. Bring that in. Whew. So many foods. I should have eaten lunch. That pizza is a huge element, but I only need it to be pretty teeny. Make it a little bit bigger than I need. Maybe it'll be a pizza sunrise. Hit return. And then I need my french fries. Almost done. This is seven now. Got my french fries. Those are already about the right size. Maybe a little big. But bigger means you have more resolution than you need, which is never a problem. And then lastly, my last green thing was the A. I was thinking I could throw in this chicken pile and it's going to be smaller you got to love references when they're already kind of photographed on black or on white or already cut out for you makes life easier all right now i've got all my magazine pages so that's a good time to save it because i haven't saved it yet so i'm going to say file save as a PSD and I'm going to name it with my name and then a description. To the desktop. Then I want to hit function F11, swoop away until I see it on the desktop. Here it is. It's still saving. I'm going to mark it green. Just so you know, these are bigger than our exercises. So if we get info, this file is, is half a gigabyte. 
it's 583 megabytes. That's pretty big. That's, that's like a 30 minute episode video file. So now we actually need to start saving memory a little bit by taking out the information we don't need. Just like you do in a collage. How do you do that in traditional collage? Yeah, scissors, you start cutting it. So how are we gonna do that here? We've done this before with exercise one. We're gonna use our lasso. We're gonna do what are called rough cuts. So I'm gonna start with the duck. First, I need to be on that layer and it can help just to close the other layers. So you're not confused. I'm also gonna turn off my guides. I'm not getting rid of them, I'm just turning them off. And you can do that by going to view, show, and uncheck guides, or the shortcut is shown to you right there, command semicolon, turns them on and off. Okay, now that I have my guides off, the reason you wanna have your guides off is otherwise your lasso can stick to your guides. And it can make it, it's like having rulers on there when you're trying to cut with scissors. Now I'm just gonna roughly lasso around this duck. I know I don't want the plate, but I do think I want the cool little garnishes. They look like baked uh, nectarines or something with raspberry compote and then of course parsley. Ooh, that wasn't good. Okay, so I lassoed it. You see how the lasso leaves plenty of overlap? I'm not trying to get a clean selection yet. This is like rough cutting with scissors from your magazine page. I need to make sure I'm on the layer. If I'm not on the layer, when I hit Command J, it will say there's nothing in that area. But if I'm on the layer selected, then when I hit Command J, it will make a perfect copy of what I lassoed. And it will automatically do what? So here, this layer, it has a little box inside its layer preview. So what happened when I lassoed it and copied? What do we call that? Rasterizing. Excellent, guys. I didn't know if you'd know that. All right. So rasterizing, which before we did by right-clicking on a smart object and rasterizing, if you lasso one part and duplicate it, it will automatically bring those pixels into the program. It will automatically rasterize those, which allows us to alter it further, to erase from it. So then I can get rid of this really large smart object. If I ever want it again, I can just bring it in from my references. All right, my next layer. What do I need to cut out for this? I just want to get rid of those edges. All right. So I'm going to lasso around what I want, just like I cut it out, and then hit Command-J and then delete the smart object. And now I have a rasterized, already sized asset that I can use. French fries, this one's a little trickier. It's gonna be hard to cut it out in a refined way. So all I need to worry about is cutting it out in a loose way right now. And I know I'm not gonna be using the cup, but I could keep a little bit of it just in case I change my mind. And then Command-J, and then delete the smart object behind it. Then you can use a Move tool, you can move it out of the way for now. Next layer, the pizza. Now this pizza is a little different because I have to make a decision. I want this pizza to be like a planetary body but I want it to be funky and weird. But if I wanted it to be a perfect circle, like the sun is, I could use what I learned with our vector tools. And instead of using the vector shape circle, I could use the what's called the marquee select tool, which is right underneath the move tool, and choose ellipse select, hold down shift, and select a circle within this pizza. And then hit command J and then delete, and I would have a perfect circular pizza sun, right? Does that kind of make sense? So I enforced a certain cutout. And I actually like that a little bit more than I thought I would, but I didn't delete the smart object yet. 
because the other method